Hello everyone and welcome to your Chem 113 review on the Pauli Exclusion Principle. My name is Jason and I have worked for the ASU Tutoring Center. Now as I have been alluding to in previous videos, what the Pauli Exclusion Principle states, Pauli Exclusion Principle, what it states is that um, no two electrons, electrons can have the same four, uh, sorry, the same set, I guess I could have just said same four, same set of four quantum numbers. Um, those numbers being M, L, M sub L, and uh, M sub S. Okay, so, so essentially quantum numbers once you have all the quantum numbers for an electron, you have uniquely identified that electron. Okay, no other electron um, can have those exact same four quantum numbers. They can have three of the same, but they can't have all four of the same. Now, the first three quantum numbers, M, L, and M sub L, those are the primary quantum numbers, uh, sorry, the principal quantum number, the secondary quantum number, and the magnetic quantum number, those have all been discussed in the previous video. But what is that little M sub S? What does that one represent? That one represents the spin magnetic quantum number. This is our last quantum number that we need to learn and it's denoted M sub S. It's commonly just called the spin of an electron. Uh, essentially, it's kind of hard to exactly describe what it is. Um, it's not actually that the electrons are spinning the electrons don't actually spin. There was a time in chemistry when we thought the electrons were spinning, um, but you can, you can think of them in that way. Um, it, it essentially just means that within a given orbital, there are two states that an electron can exist in. And we give the numbers as either positive one half or negative one half. Again, there's nothing really between those two numbers that, that's specific, right? It, it's just that if you look at two electrons in the same orbital, you'll just assign one of them positive one half and one of them negative one half for their spins. But again, they're not exactly spinning. Like if you look at an electron, it's, and you look at like an axis that it's going through, it's not that one goes in this direction and the other goes in, I have to really think about drawing this. Yeah, there we go. It's not that one goes in that, it, like counterclockwise, and the other goes clockwise. They're not actually spinning like that, but that is often how we think about them. And in fact, uh, in, in the next video, we're, we're going to be discussing these sort of like diagrams we can use for electrons. And we, we write an orbital as just like a line and we'll write one electron this way and one electron that way. These represent the two different spins that the electron can have, sort of like an up spin and a down spin. But again, they're not really spinning. It's just meant to distinguish them. Okay. Um, so the, the second part of this question, what does this principle tell us about the number of electrons in an orbital? So suppose we're looking at a single orbital. How is an orbital defined? An orbital is defined by its M, its L, and its M sub L. Those three quantum numbers give us an orbital, right? The, the, the principal quantum number gives us the shell, the secondary quantum number gives us the subshell, and then the magnetic quantum number gives us the orbital within that subshell. So if you have a, a single orbital, we have a single orbital, um, the electrons within that all have the same M, L, and M sub L values. So because these two electrons can't have the same four quantum numbers, um, so I, I said these two electrons, I, I'm implying how many there's gonna be. Because these electrons cannot have the same quantum numbers, they can't have the same M sub S. But the only possible values for the spin are plus a half and minus a half. So when you're within a single orbital, you can have at most two electrons. You can't have three, because if you had three, there's going to have to be a repeat of spin. You, you'll have to have two that are either plus a half or two that are minus a half. And if you have two that have the same spin, since you're within the same orbital, that would mean all four of these quantum numbers would be all the same, which goes against the Pauli exclusion principle. So because of the Pauli exclusion principle, there are at most two electrons in a given orbital. And these two electrons are differentiated by their spin. 
Okay, so that's the poly exclusion principle. Fantastic. Well, thank you for watching. Um, if you have, uh, if you want to see what kind of free tutoring services we have available on, on your campus, uh, head over to tutoring.asu.edu slash content slash tutor dash search. By going here, you'll be able to find a tutor on your campus or online that'll be able to help you with your specific class. Uh, thank you all for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.